please stand for the reading of God's word this morning. The gospel according to Luke verses 1 through 26. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin that was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. God is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will be given, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. May God add his blessing to our word this morning. You may be seated. In Advent, we are reminded of how much we ourselves need a Savior. Christians prepare for celebrating the birth of Jesus by remembering the longing that the Jews had for the promised Messiah. And we celebrate and are reminded of how much we need someone to save us as well. Advent is a way of pulling out of the annual Christmas rush and finding an oasis of peaceful, practical, spiritual material. If we observe thoughtfully, we can focus our minds and our hearts and we can draw near to God in ways that we can't do otherwise. All things are better when we prepare for them. That is the purpose of Advent, to prepare our hearts for what God has promised for our lives. We see from our scripture this morning that this holy season begins with, number one, hope for a new beginning. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. This season of joyful preparation is also a season of great hope. Don't quit playing on me, Pastor Reggie. If we fully enter into its celebration, we will be constantly invited to clear away all that limits us. We will be invited to clear away all that limits us and open up space in our hearts, in our homes, in our relationships, in our lives for love incarnate to be born. This is important not only spiritually, but it matters in every aspect of our life, in our business, in our relationships, and in our finances. If you want your bottom line to improve in any area, this is a big part of the answer. Every day is a new opportunity for a new beginning. That's where you say amen. Every day is an opportunity for a new beginning. Every day is a chance for something to happen that is miraculous. Every day is a chance for something to happen that was not possible yesterday. The candles we light symbolize Jesus Christ, the true light of the world. And it is he who can dispel the hopelessness of an age 
which has almost lost hope. Not just simple hope, but an Advent hope. The kind of hope that was proclaimed by Jesus' cousin in Isaiah 40. Like a voice of one calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. The message we are able to hold close in our heart and to share with the world is that the Lord is always coming with an answer to those who make room for a miracle. If there is no room in the end, then prepare a place in the stable because the Lord will be born. One way or another, the Lord will be born. This season also begins with, secondly, our hope for a miracle. In verse 35, we read, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. What was it about this time and this place in Israel that needed hope? Why was the soil so fertile for a miracle? Because that's the only place where a miracle can happen in an impossible circumstance. The impossible circumstances of a hopeless situation create the perfect environment for a miracle. Does that make sense? I'm going to read it again. The impossible circumstances of a hopeless situation create the perfect environment for a miracle. If you have depleted all of your resources and you can no longer do it on your own, if you have run out of, of every possible opportunity, if you've run through every relationship, if you have absolutely come to your very end, well, congratulations, because that is the birthplace of the miraculous. You hear what I'm saying this morning? God shows up in impossible situations. The first thing that needs to happen in order for the miracle is we need to deal with fear. You see, fear, it makes you crazy and it closes you up in a box. In preparation for your miracle, the first thing the scripture dealt with was fear. It may seem a strange thing to talk about fear and being afraid at Christmas time. It's a time of great joy and gladness. But the fact is, we cannot feel joy and peace when we're afraid. Notice how many times this was said in preparation for the birth of the Lord. While the angel first appeared to Zacharias in the temple and he was terrified, the angel said unto him, fear not. The angel appears to Mary and she's afraid and the angel says, fear not. On the night of the Lord's birth, when the angel appeared to the shepherds, it says they were very afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not. In fact, almost every time a messenger from God shows up on the scene with the good news for that person, the first thing that is said is do not be afraid. Fear and hope do not work together. Let me just say, do not be afraid of what's coming. Whatever it is in your life, do not be afraid. We are never alone. Don't be afraid of the unknown. When every human option has faded, God shows himself strong. 
The power of the most high will overshadow you. Amen. Your answer will be something that is being born brand new that was not there yesterday. Our job is not to figure out how an impossible situation or an impossible miracle can happen. We try to make God small enough to understand by giving him options. But if you really had options, you wouldn't really need a miracle. The very idea of a miracle with options is a contradiction of terms. Our job is not the details, it's to prepare the way for the Lord so that the miracle can be born into our situation. We prepare the way by opening up to infinite possibility and removing our expectations and our instructions. We stop telling God how and when he is supposed to show up because that is a prescription not for hope, but for hopelessness. Trying to change other people or manipulate them is a prescription for hopelessness. But there is infinite possibility every single day if we only have eyes to see it and call it what it is, miraculous. There it is. Here's what I know in conclusion. I know that we do not grieve like people who have no hope. We are not alone. We are not abandoned, even if you feel like it. We are not orphans, and fear will tell us that we are, but that comes from our mind and not our spirit. In our spirit, we know the truth that miracles begin with the resolution of fear. And perhaps that is the largest miracle of all, the end of fear. No matter how scary things seem, God will never leave us alone. For no word from God will ever fail. Whatever it is you're afraid of, the word of the Lord is this, fear not. It is when all natural hope is gone that we find the depths of God. So the angel said to the shepherds and to the church of CLC in 2017, the angel said, fear not, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be for all people for all time. For unto you is born a savior in the city of David. And his name is Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Son of God, Savior of the world, giver of hope, we lay down our fear and we pick up holy hope. Lord, we lay down our expectations and Lord, we pick up holy hope. Thank you for being born, for being our savior. Thank you for all you have done, all that you are doing, Lord, and all that you will do for us in the future. We love you. We put our hope and our trust squarely in your hands today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.